Welcome in, I'm Justin the Chris, and today I got a few questions and I would like to address them to you guys. One of the questions was, how the heck do I even print with resin? Well, I'm gonna address some of those issues and questions right now. But first things first, if you are new, leave a comment below, let's chat, let me, let's introduce ourselves, let's get to know each other, and welcome. Really appreciate you coming along. So how the heck do you 3D print? So it's pretty simple. There's really only a few components that you are gonna really need. I recommend the Elegoo Mars uh, resin 3d printer it's an lcd model it is great uh, for beginners and if you want to pick one up there's a link in the description below so this is not the same as a fdm printer an fdm printer is a spool of plastic like this this right here is a roll of pla plastic for 3d printing and this goes into the printer melts at a hot nozzle and squirts itself out into a finished product dlp and lcd printers however are a little bit different this is resin. It's a liquid-based 3D printing. And the way it works is a laser, if you're using a DLP printer, but I'm gonna be talking more about the LCD printers because that's what I use and highly recommend. But the LCD ones, they expose the resin with light, a UV light, and it cures the resin and it goes up layer by layer by layer. An FDM printer, your print starts at the bottom and works its way up and then it's finished. But a resin printing is a little bit different. It prints upside down. It comes up out of the liquid upside down. It's pretty cool. Seems like magic every single time I print with it. It just blows my mind. It's so much fun. Now, since you're using chemicals, because that's essentially what this is, you have to take some precautions, especially depending on the brand you're using. Luckily, this is the Elegoo brand. I highly recommend using this because it's very little odor, if any at all. I've never really experienced any odors with it, um, but some of them out there are really, really strong. You need to wear a mask and you always need to wear gloves. Regardless of the resin you're using, you're gonna wanna wear gloves. These guys right here, gloves. And as an added bonus, safety glasses is kind of a nice thing too because things splash around and you wanna take those precautions. So how do you get the file onto the printer? You use some a slicing software it's called. And a good one I like to use, especially with this printer, is a software called ChichuBox. And it's absolutely free. Now to get the file onto the printer and use it, you put it into this slicing software. You set it up on a printer. And there's a lot of things I could go into on how to make this work perfect every time and if you're interested I will do a separate video on that in the future because that's pretty much a dedicated video explaining how how all that works but the short version is you set it up and then you add support material support material helps the printer print the part and keep it on the print bed because sometimes if you print something it could just fall off during the print and it'll continue to print before you ever even know it and you've wasted the material and then from there you uh, hit slice so then you transfer that slice file onto a flash drive or SD card, it just depends on the printer. Then you take that, bring it on over to your machine, you plug it in, you load up the file, and then you hit print. Extra pro tip, always level your print bed every single time before you print a new thing. Trust me, saves yourself some time, headache, and wasted material, which means you save some cash. Level your print bed every single time. Now, once the printer is done printing, uh, you aren't finished. <laughs> there are a few things you still have to do. I like to let my parts sit for a minute because it comes up out of a liquid, it's still gonna be dripping. So, and again, you don't wanna be wasteful with this stuff because this, this resin isn't necessarily cheap, but it's not too expensive. But you wanna make sure you don't waste any. So you let it drip out back into the vat. Don't worry, it's still usable. You don't have to change the stuff. Once you pour it in there, you're totally fine. Once you've waited a few minutes, I usually go about five, 10 minutes or so, and then you take it off the printer. So you pop it off the printer, this extra little cleaning vat, bath, whatever you want to call it, totally optional. And I like to rub my fingers around on it and kind of hand clean it a little bit. Then I take that and throw it into an ultrasonic cleaner that has rubbing alcohol in it. And then I run that for about five minutes. Once that's finished, it comes out. I put it down on a paper towel. I like to use these automotive ones. They're a little bit thicker and they're a little more absorbent. And then once it's sitting on there, you let it dry completely. Uh, it just helps with the curing process. Because once it's dry, it moves over to the curing station. Then the curing station is just a UV light. It takes the residue that's still kind of left on the print, because no matter what, there's still gonna be a little bit left. You put it in this curing station and let it cure. And that hardens everything up. Now, if you didn't, let it completely dry prior the rubbing alcohol will still have a little bit of that resin in it and you'll get this kind of like this gloss sheen and random spots and it'll be kind of splotchy and it doesn't look as good now extra pro tip pull off all your support material prior to curing 
it definitely helps. And again, I'll do a full video on just that process because there's a lot of extra little things that can help you out in the long run that I'll go over as well. Now, when it's in the curing station, you don't need it to be in there for too long. I usually let it go for 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes just I'll let it go. I'll just say, you know what, I'm leaving for a couple of hours uh, out of the house. I'll just let it run for a while. It doesn't necessarily need it that much that long, but it, it, more is can't hurt in it. And then you're done. You're ready to paint or leave it as is, depending on what you're doing with it. It's pretty simple. It's just you have to do all these steps and have these extra materials on hand. And the sucky thing is, a lot of it is consumable, so it will add up in the dollar sense. So you wanna be cost efficient as possible, so don't be wasteful. Do what you can to save some money. There's gonna be links in the description for you to grab. However, like gloves and rubbing alcohol and face masks, unfortunately, as you already know, are pretty scarce and hard to find, so I can't really, I can't really put those in, in the description because they're not really obtainable right now so if you happen to have it or find them that's the thing and i'm going to be doing a video on alternatives to this uh coming up so look out for that uh, in the very very near future technically i've already shot it so be on the lookout for that but the printer itself that i recommend and resin that i recommend and anything else like ultrasonic cleaners and uv lights stuff like that there'll be links down in the description for you to grab do you have any questions i leave something out or just simply want to hey start a conversation leave some comments below i definitely read every single comment and if you have any questions again i am more than happy to help you out so consider subscribing i'd really appreciate it thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video now go out there make some awesome guys see you later